This is Map Musings. Today we're going to check out Panoramic Maps. A map involving railroads in the United States. An historic map of Pennsylvania. And population in Antarctica. This and so much more. Local maps, regional maps, international maps, nonsensical maps. You're tuned into Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and these are the maps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you. So let's begin with this German-made map from 1853 of the Americas. At this point in time, pretty much the outline of all the continents had already been made. But something these cartographers were not so sure about was the exact outline of Greenland and all the islands in Canada. As a matter of fact, most of Canada isn't Canada on this map. The cartographers call it British North America. At the time this map was made, Alaska would still be in the hands of Russia and not the United States. As we scoot down, we see not all of the 50 states in the United States, but instead we see massive territories, such as the Nebraska Territory, the Oregon Territory, or the Utah Territory. And they do have some big cities listed, such as San Francisco out west, Toronto, Boston, Philadelphia, and New York. Something else this map does fairly well is show a rough topography of the many countries, as well as show a lot of different rivers, even if they don't have names on them. So when this map was made in 1853, Germany would have been known as the German Confederation. This 1836 map of Pennsylvania is very detailed. Not only does it show a relief of the topography, it also gives us counties, and in thick black lines shows us the different canals and railroads throughout the state. It's quite amazing the amount of work and effort that went into making these canals to make trade so profitable throughout the region, even if the canal itself was a financial disaster. They even went so far to show at the very top of the map the elevation changes of the Pennsylvania Canal System, as well as the elevation changes of the Columbia Railroad. So this is showing us the canal's elevation changes from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh, and it's quite astounding as it varies between sea level to over 1,600 feet. So while there's no permanent residence in Antarctica, there are scientists throughout the year. Of course, during the warmer months of summer, the population swells compared to the skeleton shift that works in the winter just to keep things running. Probably the main station in Antarctica is McMurdo Station run by the United States, and it serves as kind of a main base for all of Antarctica. From there, scientists can go practically anywhere on the continent. I should also point out that the population will vary from the numbers shown on this map year by year. Now I'm not real sure what this map is trying to say, or how accurate it is, because soils vary even just a mile apart from each other's, but I guess what it's trying to say is that here's the generic, most base soil you'll find in every state. Kind of the colors and what it'll look like. Because soil in Western Oregon is going to be totally different than the soil in Eastern Oregon, or the soil in Southern Florida and the Everglades is totally different than what's in the Panhandle. It's still very interesting to look at, especially if you like soil. This is a map from 2019, showing us all the defunct rail lines, mainly in the United States, though it has some of Canada and Mexico. Unfortunately, it doesn't say what the red or yellow lines are, nor the green, but just know that in some degree, these lines are not being used. One of my favorite types of maps are panoramic maps. These were very popular at the turn of the century, the late 1800s and early 1900s, where they would present a bird's eye view of a city, a community, a town, somewhere in North America usually, and they just had so many cool details. You could really get a feel for how the town was, and a real good artist would detail specific buildings, landmarks, all around the town. These kind of maps were used as promotions sent to faraway places to get people to invest in these new communities. They showed available land, as well as showed how how prosperous the town was. This particular map is of Dawson City in the Yukon Territory, done in 1903. I could look at these maps all day and find different things to see and new things to explore. That's probably why on my bookshelf I have several panoramic map books. 
Here's another panoramic map. This one from 1882, it shows the city of Akron, Ohio, and the surrounding Summit County. When this image was done, Akron had about 16,000 people, and this was done just before Akron exploded in population. Between 1880 to 1920, the population would go from 16,000 to over 200,000 people, mainly thanks to all the industrial jobs. So it's interesting to see that this map provides us a small window of time before Akron becomes an industrial powerhouse, sort of in its more rural, small town beginnings. Now this map isn't 100% accurate, but it gives us a rough idea of what time people usually eat dinner in their respective country. Now some will say there's a difference between dinner and supper. I don't know the difference, but let's just go into it here. It's amazing how early people in the Nordic countries seem to eat their dinner between 4 to 5.30, 6 o'clock? Dang! And people down in the Iberian Peninsula eat super late between 9 and 10. Italy, Greece, Macedonia, they as well all eat very late, between 8 and 9. Overall, the average seems to be between 6 and 7 p.m. Bond. James Bond. This map shows us every country that has had a James Bond villain, up until 2021. This map just simply shows us all of California's counties and their population from the largest being Los Angeles County with over 10 million people, to the smallest, Alpine County, with just over 1,000 people. Most of the population here is shown in the south or around the Bay Area, with the least populated areas being in the north and the eastern portions of California. This map is showing us the median annual total rainfall on the western coast of the South Island of New Zealand. This shows us the different microclimates throughout this region. For example, about 2,000 millimeters is roughly 80 inches of rain, with 6,000 being over 230 inches of rain. So we're talking about bucket tons of rain. This part of New Zealand is very mountainous, forested, and super lush, and receives considerable amount of rainfall. It is by far one of the most remote regions, if not the most remote region, in New Zealand, with a very small amount of people actually living there. This map is showing us how to say the word church in different languages throughout Europe, as well as the origins of the word. So, for example, in Finnish, you would say church as kierko. Kostul is church in Polish. Italian is chiesa. And iglesia is for Spanish. Cool and informative map. This map shows us every country that has a U.S. military installation, whether it be a base, a station, whatever. These countries all have something U.S. military related in them. This is as of 2019. Okay, this one's really cool. It's showing us how many counties away you are from the nearest border to either Canada or Mexico. So if you live in Imperial County, California, you're right next to the Mexican border. So you're a dark blue, you're zero counties away. If you live in Hancock County, Maine, you are three counties away from the Canadian border. So you get the idea here. So as you head into the American South, you are furthest away from either Mexico or Canada by county, meaning on foot or driving. And you're pretty much in no man's land if you live in Southern Florida. If you live in Miami-Dade County, Florida, you're well over 35 counties away from the nearest border. Hawaii technically would border Mexico because there's no counties between Hawaii, the Pacific Ocean, than Mexico. And Alaska's already right against Canada. They don't have counties in Alaska, they have boroughs, but they sort of work as the same thing. Super cool, I like this map. Based on the color, this map tells you what a person from each state is called. Just take the state name and add the ending. For purple, Georgian, North Carolinian, Washingtonian, Californian, Oregonian, Pennsylvanian. With green, you add an er. Vermonter, Mainer, New Yorker. Red, you add an ite. Wisconsinite, Wyomingite. And with blue, you add an an. Idahoan, Montanan, Texan, Utahan. And there's a few states that show different mixes of the two where it's okay to use it either way. The only one that I think is maybe wrong on this map is Michigan, when really everyone just calls them Michiganers. Unless you live in the Upper Peninsula where you're called a Youper. Youpers for life! This is a world data map from 2010 by the World Health Organization. 
It's guesstimating the population that has never had alcohol once in their life. Based off of this map, the majority of people who have not had alcohol are in the Middle East and Africa, as well as into India and into Indonesia. Somewhere between 10 and 20% of North America does not drink alcohol. So I guess I am in the minority. And it looks like some of the countries who drink the most alcohol are Germany, France, Norway, Australia. All of those countries have less than 10% of the population having never drunk alcohol before. Here's a railroad map of Canada. And it shows us multiple things, including the operator of the rail line, as well as the amount of trains that travel on the route. What the map isn't telling us is when is this data from, and why doesn't it tell us that this is specifically passenger traffic? Which it is, but it doesn't say that. The busiest areas are the 501 corridor, up into Quebec along the St. Lawrence River, and into Halifax. There's also a surprisingly busy route on Vancouver Island. Via Rail is the only company that currently goes across all of Canada, and it splits up at Jasper, where it goes either north to Prince Rupert or south to Vancouver. That route has three trains a week going back and forth. So pretty much every major city in Canada is at least touched by a train. Even my boys up in Churchill getting represented with a train. Some major outliers that don't have a train are Calgary and Regina. Thanks for watching Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and those were the maps. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. We also have a Patreon which you can support. In the future, when we get Patreon supporters, they will be shown here. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. My boys up in Churchill.